Hey everyone, and welcome to another how to write APA style results sections video. In this one, we're gonna be talking multiple regression. Woo, yes. So in this one, we are going to open up some data in Jamovi and run some analysis, simple analysis. I think I'm gonna do maybe two predictors in this multiple regression, one outcome variable. And that way we can just have a simple structure and not spend all of our time doing predictor after predictor after predictor for <laughs> the, this result section. So. Let's go ahead and open up some data. Now, I am using Jamovi version 2.3.22, which is the current version available at the time of recording for Jamovi. Now, you, of course, can grab any data from any statistical package. I just thought that this was a good way to just show you and because Jamovi is freely available and it's also uh, got a ton of data sets that you can pull from and pull into for free. They're already in the program or you can just go up to modules and add new stuff again for free. So you can follow along with me in this and get some practice on how to write this result section. So multiple regression is a general linear model analysis that you use to predict an outcome variable that is continuous from either several continuous variables, uh, continuous variables and discrete variables, but generally not just discrete because then you would use analysis of variance. So they're very connected, uh, these two things, analysis of variance and multiple regression. But here we're going to focus on continuous variables, predicting continuous variables in a, a more orderly fashion, we'll say. So let's go ahead. Um, now, I'm going to use a data set from the Learning Statistics with Jamovi data set. So if we go up to the hamburger menu here and we go to open and we go to data library, you can see I already have the LSJ data set open. So if you don't have this data set, you can Check to see another video that I have on how to add modules to Jamovi. But suffice to say, you can add it by just going up here to this modules plus icon and looking for the learning statistics with Jamovi module that you can just add. And it, all it will do is add a folder to your Jamovi folder on your computer, Mac or Windows or Linux, and uh, add these CSV files. That's all they are, are CSV files. So it's pretty easy. And we are going to find the one that we can use with regression. And I believe it's these. Yeah, it's the parenthood sleep and mood data from their chapter 12 because there's a accompanying book with this as well so definitely take a look at that but you can see here they've got it tagged with correlation and regression because we can do both it's just a fun little data set that has a number of continuous variables so we'll click on that and we'll open that and what we are going to do is we are going to predict although i gotta change this to not nominal but continuous there we go we are going to predict the amount of grumpiness dan grump okay from how much sleep he gets and how much sleep the baby gets. How about that? That's the kind of model that we'll build. And so I'm gonna quickly build that model. Now, if you wanna see how to do this in Jamovi, take a look at my Jamovi playlist. I have a couple of videos about regression, one a little older from like 2019 and uh, from earlier versions of Jamovi, and then one from last year for a more updated version two. So I think I have a version one and a version two of Jamovi for how to do regression. So you can pause, you can watch. I'm just gonna quickly do uh, this with a slightly minimal discussion here. You can pause me and see where I go. You can see we're getting data already. Uh, I am going to get uh, just the omnibus test, the standardized estimate with its confidence intervals and the confidence interval for the estimate, and just to see what we can see here by putting in these estimated marginal means. Uh, we can also get the uh, uh, that was pain sleep and baby sleep. We can also get the interaction between the two, which is pretty cool. Let's get the table as well. Um, there's nothing else I really want to do here. I guess we could do this, but I'm not too concerned about uh, these assumption checks for our video today. So let's just go ahead and do that. So we are predicting Dan Grump. Okay, so his grumpiness level from two predictors, Dan sleep and baby sleep. This is the amount of sleep in hours that his baby, newborn uh, or infant, I would imagine newborn, and then how much sleep that he himself got. You can imagine this is, he's the father of this baby. Okay, so we have the model fit measure. So we've got our multiple R, which is the combination of these two predictors. And then the multiple R squared, which is again, the coefficient of determination tells us how much of the variance is explained by these two uh, predictor variables in the variance of the DV, Dan Grump. Okay. So let's go ahead and start writing um, some stuff. To, to, to get us started, I'm going to let you know things that we need to report. So things to report, we have to report R squared. <clears throat> I will use the actual, uh, this superscript here when we start writing it, but R squared betas or um, unstandardized slopes. Okay. So either betas, which are the standardized slopes, so we can compare them or the B's, which are, um, we'll say, we'll call it, yeah, B's or BS. <laughs> oh, uh, we can call that B. Uh, yeah. So the B's, which is the unstandardized slope. Okay. Uh, and then we are going to report the uh, omnibus. <clears throat> uh, actually, I need to get one more thing from this model fit. Overall model test. That's what I want. All right. Omnibus F 
uh, or I should say ANOVA, and then um, t-tests for coefficients. And we get all of this stuff from the table. Now, you may, depending on the kind of writing that you have to do, may have to report the outcomes of the different uh, assumption checks that you have to do, but we're going to stay away from that particular uh, nuance in this video, just because it would just get uh, quite a bit, quite a bit. Okay, so let's go ahead and start our results section. So we got to st uh, start off just like we do in all of our other videos, all of our other result sections. We have to start by saying, uh, restating the hypothesis in the way that we are planning on testing. So for example, if we go, okay, to test, I don't know why my uh, correction thing isn't working there, to test the hypothesis that Dan's grumpiness is predicted by how much sleep he and his baby get each night. Um, I conducted, a, I was about to say we, but yeah, I conducted to make it a more, uh, active sentence rather than a multiple regression analysis. I conducted a multiple regression analysis, oops, analysis, sorry for all of my typing and typos. They will get, uh, they will get fixed. <laughs> uh, the amount of sleep in hours that both Dan and his baby got each night were entered into the regression equation as predictor variables and then Dan's level of grumpiness as measured by, I don't know, uh, uh, the grumpiness mood detector scale. This is not real. <laughs> I actually don't know how they measured his grumpiness. So uh, for this for this canned example, so you know <laughs> we'll have to go with it. Uh, so and then uh, Dan's actually put Dan's level of grumpiness was entered into the re regression equation as the outcome variable. You could also call it criterion variable. I don't really like that name. Um, I like outcome. Outcome is various. It's like, oh yeah, that's the thing that we're predicting. So I like using that as the variable. So the first thing we want to do is talk about how much overall these two variables contribute to the variance in Dan's grumpiness, right? So this is where we get that information, the overall model test here. Now the Omnibus ANOVA test breaks it down by predictor variable, but the overall model test gives you the whole picture. So it gives you, um, as you can see, we have DF of two where this is DF one, one, right? So DF, so the numerator has two in it. Here we have one and one, but the residuals or the error term has 97 degrees of freedom because there are 100 participants. So it's N minus the number of predictors minus one. So 100 minus two predictors is 98 minus an additional one is 97. So we're going to report that. Uh, okay. The results, uh, or I could say the test revealed or showed or indicated, uh, these are all great words to use here. The test revealed that the combination of the amount of sleep that Dan and his baby received each night explained, and we're going to pull in R squared here, which is we can convert to a percentage because that's what how we read it. So 81.6% of the variance in Dan's grumpiness explained 81.6% of the variance in Dan's level of a grumpiness, okay? And then we are going to comma, and then we're going to put R, and then we're going to put two, and I'm going to highlight that, and I'm going to superscript it. And then I'm going to highlight R, and I'm going to italicize, okay? Uh, and then we'll make sure that we turn off superscript here so I can put a comma, because we're going to report the F test now, the statistic that you see here. So F2, that's what we do here, DF1, comma. Oh, we got to, R squared has equal value. Oopsies, R squared equals uh, 0.816, okay, there we go, F, uh, okay, now back to here, so 2, 97 is our next one, then we close the parenthesis, and that equals a number, and that equals 215, uh, dead even, I don't think that's, like, right, but it doesn't give us decimal points, so I am going to say 215.00, and then we're going to comma that, and we're going to put our p-value here, which is less than 0 0.001, so this is definitely a significant value, okay, a significant r squared, okay, and then we'll put a period, okay? And then I'm going to italicize F because that's what is required. You italicize all Latin letters, all Latin letters that form abbreviations. And there we go. So that's perfect. Then um, what I generally do is, depending on the size of the paragraph, depending on the information in the paragraph, and depending on several other things, I may start a new paragraph. For the sake of looking at this document in the video right now, I'm going to start a new paragraph for the coefficients. So for the coefficients, 
what we need to do is now look at this table. Okay, so we have our intercept and we have our two predictors. Our intercept tells us what the value of Dan's grumpiness level if the baby didn't get any sleep and Dan didn't get any sleep, which is kind of interesting because that's 125. I don't even think that value is entirely possible on this grumpiness mood detector scale, whatever it was used. Hilarious, um, but definitely out of there. You have the option to report your intercept only if it makes sense for the scale of the DV, right? Whatever the DV scale is. Of course, if it's a, it's a scale from zero to 100, then 125 is not worth reporting because it's not a possible outcome. You could just say that he maxes out his grumpiness if he doesn't get any sleep and his baby doesn't get any sleep. Okay. So, I mean, we're not going to report the, that here because yeah, it's a very uh, big, very big value. So we're not going to do that. Now, what we are going to report are the baby sleeps. Okay. Or the, the sleep values. So now you could imagine that the amount of sleep the baby gets impacts the amount of sleep that Dan gets, which then would impact the amount of grumpiness that Dan has. You can see in this outcome that the amount of sleep the baby gets doesn't actually play a role. So here's my p-value. It's almost one, which means that it's definitely not a contributor to the variance here. But the amount of sleep that Dan gets is off the chart here. This We're talking about T of 16. This p-value is so small. If we had exact p-values here, this would be an expo exponential value, 10 to, the, 10 to the minus like, I don't know, six or seven, I would say. And the standardized estimate here is 0 0.90, which is interpreted the same as Pearson's R. So <laughs> you can see that this is a really strong correlation between sleep, Dan's sleep, and Dan's grumpiness. So that's what we're going to report here. So what we're going to say is that we're looking at the coefficients now of this regression equation and explaining which coefficients or which variables contribute to the overall variance change in our DV. So in this case, it would be Dan's sleep and, in, and for the other predictor, baby sleep, not so much. So this is how it looks. This is, this is how it shakes out, if you will. So let's take a look here. Uh, the, predictor, the predictor variable of the amount of sleep that Dan gets each night was a strong predictor of his grumpiness level the next day. And that should be of, this is a common typo that I make. Um, definitely my left hand types faster than my right hand. So that's what happens all the time. I'm sure you have some fun stuff like that. Now you can report betas or Bs. But be consistent. I'm a beta person myself, so I typically, per, I, I typically do betas. Um, but you can do Bs as long as you make sure that you are using unstandardized coefficients or the ex actual slopes uh, for that predictor variable yourself. So to write it in this case, I would say advanced symbol. And I'm going to go ahead and find my beta. Where are you, buddy? Lowercase beta. Okay. I'm going to close that because I don't need it anymore. So beta equals, and we go over here, beta equals negative 0.903. Uh, negative 0.903 or just 90. It's fine. Comma T. And this T, while it doesn't have any uh, degrees of freedom, it's always just N minus 1. So T 100 minus 1 is 99. And then that equals uh, negative 16.17. That's a 4. That's a 7. And then P is less than 0 0.001. Um, so let's italicize our Latin letters. The Greek letters do not get italicized because they are special characters in English. So we do not italicize them. B equals 0 0.903. And here is the why, why is the negative number? Why, I hate that so much. At the end of the line, it, it is negative uh, one negative one point one six one one six point one seven. That's a little annoying. Okay, well, whatever. Um, you don't always have to do the t test thing. I just like doing it because it lets you know what the whole test was. But you could also. I'm going to put this in brackets be, because it is not. I'm going to say that it, it's either one or the other. Okay, so you can either do capital B or you can do lowercase b equals, and then we're going to put negative eight point. Here, we're grabbing this one, 9.5, okay, uh, comma, and then the rest of this if you want to. So again, it's one or the other, okay, and then we italicize B or B, okay. And I love how the slash gets italicized. Uh, and this is in the units of sleep over, so it's rise over run, so it's amount of grumpiness per hour of sleep, okay, so you could enter that in there as well. All right, then we have to say that baby sleep wasn't a significant predictor. The amount of sleep the baby, see, I did it again with of, the baby got each night was not a significant predictor. I'm going to add in strong significant 
predictor of his grumpiness level. Was not a significant predictor. And all I'm going to do is highlight this. And again, I, I, I won't do the same thing over here. All the, well, I guess I could. Let's do that, actually. Let's just highlight the whole thing. You can all see what I'm talking about. Again, in brackets, it's one or the other. So here is the beta for the kid, which is 0.04 is all I'm going to do for that one. And then um, it's not a negative number. And it is, oh, wait, I'm sorry. The 0 0.002 is actually the, 0.04 is the value of T. <laughs> 0 0.04 P is equal to, excuse me, P is equal to 0.969. So 0.97 is all I'll throw there. And then let's just change these values and then work our way backwards. So P equals 0 0.97, uh, 0 0.04. I should put the trailing zero in front here, or the preceding zero, my, my bad. And then what does real beta equal, or B equal? 0 0.01. So Dan's grumpiness rises 0 0.01 on that scale for every hour that the baby sleeps. Now, <laughs> how we're going to read this is another way, okay? So... We could, before we even enter this, we could give this a little bit of an interpretation. So let's do that. So this means that Dan's grumpiness, and so we're going to use this value here, okay? This means that, um, or I should say that Dan's grumpiness decreases. This means that Dan's overall level of grumpiness decreases by nearly nine, nine points on the scale. Uh, you could use the acronym or whatever. I'm just going to use on the scale to reference the uh, scale name that I made up in the previous paragraph here. So uh, by nearly nine points on the scale for every hour that he gets sleep. Okay. Which is great. Which makes sense, right? You're less grumpy if you don't, uh, if you get your amount of sleep. Perfect. Okay. So it makes a lot of sense. This means that the amount of grumpiness Dan has barely changes for every hour of sleep that the baby gets. Okay, I'll fix my typo here. All right, and there you go. Now you can put in means and standard deviations. How you would do that is by going to estimated marginal means. Okay, it's generally speaking, not absolutely necessary. It's absolutely not necessary, um, to be fair. Uh, so you can see here, uh, the gray is the confidence interval. You can see how much Confidence interval doesn't, you know, doesn't change. So you can, and then here, if Dan gets five hours of sleep, his grumpiness is eight. And then for each additional hour, it drops almost 10 points on this scale. And then if he gets a total of nine hours of sleep, his grumpiness level is below 50. Hooray. And then this is the interaction between Dan sleep and baby sleep. And it, it essentially looks exactly like the Dan sleep, Dan grump version here without the confidence intervals. So you could, and each of these uh, tables here gives you, since it's a continuous variable, how do, you, how do you really plot this? Well, it's essentially plotting a three dot line, right? We've got three dots here. It's essentially finding uh, what the value is uh, at one standard deviation at the mean itself. So you can see that Dan sleep, he almost gets about seven hours of sleep on average. And so what's a full standard deviation below that? And what's a full standard deviation uh, above that? And then you just plot, plot the three lines. And you can see here that baby sleep, uh, has a quite a bit of a difference, but then what does it do to the marginal mean of the DV? It obviously changes. So essentially you're plotting three dots here, 63.7 in each case. And then here is what the values are for the interaction. And again, it's essentially, uh, let's go up here, 72.8, 63.7, 54.6, 72.8, 63.7, 54.6. And it's the same for all three values of baby sleep by Dan's sleep. So Baby doesn't register any movement. Again, it's 0.01. And so if it's already uh, getting rounded up here, it's not, it's, it's not going to change. So this line essentially looks like this line. And you can put those in your uh, results section as well as figures. You can put these uh, tables in if you want. If you have a lot of predictors, I suggest that. This suffices with a two predictor design. So it's not even that big of a deal. And that is how you do how to write APA style results sections for multiple regression. Let me know if you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or general feedback in the comment section down below. Thank you for watching this video. I will see you in the next one.